So last time we checked in with you, you were not ready to call for impeachment proceedings into President Trump. Where do you stand now? I think um, times have changed, and I think the Congress has to begin those impeachment proceedings. Look, I've had the chance now over the course of the past several weeks to uh, read the Mueller report in its entirety. I've talked to legal experts, I've talked to my colleagues, and um, it is evident, uh, if you actually read the report, that um, the president, I believe, committed multiple counts of obstruction of justice. And once you get to that threshold, uh, there's, I think, it, it falls on Congress to essentially um, uphold our responsibility to protect and defend the Constitution. And that's, I think that's, what, that's what's required and that's what I, uh, I intend to do. So, um, you know, this is obviously significant. I don't want to call it a change of heart for you, but this is really the first time you unequivocally said that uh, Congress should proceed with uh, impeachment proceedings. You said it was because you read the Mueller report, which came out in April. Yep. What specifically in the report was the tipping point for you? So <clears throat> the report is, it's exhaustive. It's about 450 pages. There's a lot in there. It's broken up into two volumes. Uh, first part deals with the Russian interference campaign into our elections, which is egregious and horrible. And if you go through it, it there's all sorts of, um, put it politely, non-complimentary aspects as to, and descriptions as to the activities of a Trump, or Trump campaign officials at that point. However, the special counsel indicates that there was no, uh, as they define it, conspiracy between a Trump campaign to benefit from the Russian interference, although it, they do say explicitly that they expected that they would benefit. There was no quid pro quo, if you will. The second half of that report is all about obstruction. And as you go through it, particularly as a former prosecutor, the, what the special counsel details is on a number of instances, they lay out the facts about what happened, they then apply the facts to the law when it comes to obstruction. And they say on a number of different occasions that there is more than, that there's at least substantial evidence to indicate that the requirements to prove obstruction have been met. And when you hear that, when you read that, when you understand what that says, that the President of the United States engaged in, in multiple acts to try to obstruct a federal investigation, then I, I, I think our hand is forced. This is not something I take lightly. This is not something that um, I would wish that any member of Congress or any government would have to go through. I, I know it's divisive. I know there are strong feelings about this, but I also believe that when you have a president that has willfully broken the law repeatedly to try to uh, evade justice for um, various uh, acts of uh, illegal acts, then Congress has to hold them accountable. So you will be at odds with Speaker Pelosi on this issue right now. Did you yeah. warn her about this new position? Um, uh, maybe she's watching. So <laughs> I, I haven't had the conversation with her yet. Um, she's a loyal look, newsmaker's viewer. So <laughs> it's good you came here to tell her. Yeah. So um, I haven't had the conversation with her yet. I um, I think uh, I respect her opinion on this. Um, I respect the opinion of my colleagues. About a third of our caucus has come out in favor of impeachment at this point. I, I respect where those that have, where they are, I respect those that haven't quite gotten there yet. I intend to continue to talk to our colleagues about it and talk to the speaker, because I do think that, um, unfortunately, from my perspective, this is a threshold question. And I, I don't think having had time to, again, read that full report, discuss with constitutional scholars, experts, um, talk to some of my colleagues, I'm not even sure this is even a close call. There can be, uh, there's a little vagueness right now sometimes when we talk mm -hmm. about having an impeachment inquiry. And, you know, for people at home, you say you support it. W would you want it to start next week? Is it something you see starting months from now? I know, obviously, a lot has to happen for it to even begin. But sort of when you say, I think we need to do this, you're saying we need to do it now? Or you so, look, I, I think from my perspective, we've crossed that threshold. I think there's evidence out there that says that he has committed these acts of obstruction and he needs to be held to account, period. I think we should begin those at, as, as quickly as we can. I respect the fact that the majority of my colleagues aren't quite there yet, our speaker isn't quite there yet, and ultimately, that's gonna be up to some of my colleagues and the speaker, I respect their opinion. But I will continue to talk to them and try to convince them as to the perspective that I have. And I think, Ted, really clearly on this, much of this has been focused on, the discussion's been focused on trying to convince other Democrats, convince the speaker that this is what has to be done. This is not a partisan issue. There's nothing, I, I read those documents not as a, a, a Democrat trying to get a Republican Republican president, but the last thing in the world I want to do is to spend the next several months going through impeachment proceedings. I don't want to do this. I think that when you have 
a special counsel that is deeply respected for his service to our country and his career in law enforcement that has assembled the best team of investigators in modern American history that comes out with a report that says there's substantial evidence to believe that the president's conducted multiple acts of obstruction, what else are you supposed to do? Well, should he have made the call then on obstruction of justice? You're a former prosecutor. I, yes, he, I, I, without question. I don't think that's even uh, even close. I. I understand that the that Mr. Mueller decided to the special counsel decided to abide by the terms of an office of legal counsel memo, a, a office within the Department of Justice that is supposed to provide guidelines for uh, for prosecutors, and I understand that. I would also counter respectfully to Mr. Mueller that that is a memo that is not binding law, that is not a Supreme Court decision. There's no case law on this. If you have those concerns, I would have. Um, the entire point of the special counsel is to try to remove, given the political sensitivities around impeachment, is to try to remove this from the political process and uh, uh, approach this as objectively as one can with the resources necessary to try to uncover the truth. I think coming essentially right up to that line and then punting that to Congress to say, hey, you guys figure this out, is not, you, you kind of mess with the entire intent of what the special counsel statute is supposed to be all about. We have so much to talk about. I don't want to yeah. uh, take the whole show on this, but I just have to uh, push back when you say it's not partisan. Speaker Pelosi right now clearly disagrees with you on whether it would be perceived as partisan, mm -hmm. even if in your view it shouldn't be. It's a fact of law. She said recently, quote, Trump is goading us to impeach him. Mm -hmm. Every single day he's just like taunting because he knows it would be very divisive in the country, but he doesn't really care. He just wants to solidify his base. Uh, is she wrong on the politics? I don't think she is wrong, but I also don't think, I think respectfully, on some of this, I'm not so sure it matters, one. Two, there is a Republican colleague of ours in the House that has called for impeachment as well. And this is where, getting back to what I was saying a second ago, the fact that this has been so focused on, hey, Democrats, how do you come together and impeach the president? This shouldn't be a Democratic, inquis this shouldn't be a, a Democratic inquiry. This is an inquiry from members of Congress that took an oath to, sw to, to preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of the United States. And it clearly, the special counsel clearly says, if you read the darn report, that, that he committed obstruction. Period. And if that's the case, what, how do we preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution and then not try to hold the president accountable? And for my Republican colleagues, and there are a number of them that behind closed doors, well, they might not have told me that they're for impeachment, certainly don't appreciate or like the acts and activities of this administration. Well, then it's time to put that aside and actually step up and do what we are the, to to execute the oath that we were sworn to, that we swore to take, and to protect the Constitution, protect our country. And I hope that over the next several weeks, I hope that with Mr. Mueller's testimony before Congress, more of them will do so. And that's where this country should also go. Not focusing on the political, the, the politicalization of this, and focusing on the what Democrats are going to do, but ask our Republican colleagues why they think that after all this time, a 448-page report that indicates what it indicates is worth just throwing it out in the trash bin and not even bothering to take a look.